That's a microphone. And I want to know that thing goes through there. Can you see me? No. Good morning. I'm off on a bit of a road trip this morning to go out and visit a small remote Aboriginal community off the beaten path. Uh, it's time to see how a different side of culture lives here in Australia, and I'm super excited. Let's go. This one isn't an easy story to tell, but to give an accurate depiction of life in Australia, it's a video that I had to make. Watch out for dogs, kids, and snakes, that sign said. We want Biowadri community. That's the right direction. And it's all dirt road from here on out. <laughs> oh, this is great. On one of my last weeks in the country, I made a connection in Western Australia to go out and visit a modern day Aboriginal community to see what life is like from the original Australian locals. But just getting out to meet them proved to be a task unto itself. As you can see, there's a storm over there. And also a storm over there. It's starting to rain just a little bit now, which is not good at all. I need it to hold off until I get there or else I'll be in a lot of trouble. Uh, these roads will flood very quickly. Just gotta get there before it rains for real. Calculations are correct. We got about 50k to go. Yeah, what's your community? There it is. I made it. I think I just passed it. It came up quick, which is surprising with nothing else going on. After a heart-pounding three and a half hour dirt road drive. I arrived at one of the most remote villages I've ever stepped foot in in my life. To be honest, at first the place seemed like a ghost town. But as I got closer to the school, it was clear that this place was very much alive. I met with school principal and my local connect, Kevin McKenna, who explained a bit about the community's dynamic and showed me around the classrooms. I observed the children going through their daily routine and it seemed as though I could have been anywhere with a few minor differences. And once class was over, a few kids took it upon themselves to show me around town. Put your head in there. Based on their culture and history, Aboriginals are, are nomadic people, so they don't have much value for material things. They use what they need and then let it go. And nowhere was that more obvious than at our first stop on the tour, the junkyard. One of the students I connected with right away was a boy named Jandy, who was the oldest of the 14 students in school and a die-hard Australian footy fan. He helped me understand what it's like to be a teenager within the community and also showed me some tricks to surviving in his backyard. Like where kangaroos hide out and what plants were good for eating. He even taught me how to properly pass the Australian footy. It's crazy to think, this far away, this remote, how similar people are and the ability to connect is only a matter of listening and being open to new things. As the sun set, the kids went back home and some of the teachers invited me in for a campfire cookout. Beef ribs, there's chuck steak, there's 
It was the perfect opportunity to ask more about their life and role with Empire Wadri over some delicious stew. The next morning marked a special day. It was the last day of school. And of course, the kids were very excited about it. There was a ceremony, prizes for those with good attendance, as well as a big thank you to the university students from Perth who came and volunteered at the school. And it all ended with a familiar song. But the best part of the day, after the classroom activities were over, was the feast. And the main course for this special occasion was, of course, kangaroo. Look at those guys. The kidneys. Oh, kidneys. Most of the meat was cut up and thrown in a stew, while the tails were wrapped and taken to the fire to be cooked. Once they were ready, we pulled them out, skinned them, checked on the stew, and called everyone in. It was a very cool process to see done, and now it was time to taste it. The kangaroo tail was fatty, gamey, and delicious. And I ate it all while sitting next to one of the community elders, who told me about how to pick the perfect piece of root, and also how they used to catch them with their bare hands. And after a quick round two of root with another mate, it was time for me to get back on the road before the sun set. I said my goodbyes and I made the long trip back to Perth. Catch ya. And just like that, I'm back on these dirt roads, back to Perth, back to reality. After a few short days here in the community, I feel like I've learned so much about the people and the dynamics that make places out here in the middle of nowhere work. Uh, from interacting with the teachers, the students, and the community leaders, it was so cool to get a local perspective on a story that's often untold here in Australia. But as of right now, I gotta find some paved roads pretty soon because this rental car isn't gonna hold up much longer on these dirt paths. But what an amazing experience, totally worth it. I couldn't be happier. Till next time, travel deeper. <laughs>